Hello, McClary Rock Arbor. On today's episode, the first episode of Take 5, we're going to be talking about the importance of how we speak to other people. Today's episode's titled, It's Not Like I Murdered Anyone, and we're going to talk about the power of our words. So get ready to take five with us here today as we discuss this important piece of our lives that we need to employ always. church family. Thanks for joining us on our first ever episode of Take 5. Take 5 is going to be a weekly video episode of encouragement where we look at scripture and tackle tough topics and questions and things that we deal with and wrestle with in life, all geared towards becoming better followers of Jesus so that we can live to the best of our abilities for Him. Today, We titled this episode again, It's Not Like I Murdered Anyone, and the reason for that you'll find out as we read today's passage. We're going to be in Matthew 5, verses 21 through 24. We're going to pray here and then we'll read, but I want you to kind of gear your mind in each of these episodes and kind of ask yourself the question, Lord, is this something that you need to work in my life on, in my heart on, so I can be more like you? Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for your word, that thousands of years since you roamed the earth and and ministered and pointed the way to to eternity and to God and to righteous living, God, we have your word that we can look at and, and still grow from, learn from, and be prepared and equipped to go into this world to point the way to you, Jesus. So Lord, as we read this passage, Would you challenge us and help us to grow in becoming more and more like you? I give you praise and thanks for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Matthew 5, 21 through 24 says, You have heard the ancients were told, You shall not commit murder, and whoever commits murder shall be liable to the court. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court. And whoever says to his brother, you good for nothing, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court. And whoever says, you fool, shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. Therefore, if you are presenting your offering at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your offering there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled with your brother, and then come and present your offering. So again, it's not like I murdered anyone. See, we have a a tendency to kind of rank sins. Well, at least I didn't do this. I'm only to hit this one, so that's got to count for something, right? Well, not exactly. God wants us, God has called us to, to live lives of purity where we are not allowing room for any sin. And that doesn't mean that we don't mess up, because we do. But... We should never be complacent and comfortable in a spot like that. We're like, well, I'm not murdering anyone, so I'm not too bad. There are far worse than me, right? Well, it's not what Jesus is telling us here. Jesus is saying that if you have anger in your heart towards your brother, that if you're here trying to say, God, here's my life, here's my offering, here's my sacrifice, and you remember that you've got a brother or sister that's got a beef with you because you wronged them in some way, you mistreated them in some way, that you're to drop everything and go and seek reconciliation with them. That's huge, church. It's so important that we recognize that truth in our lives because, yes, going to Jesus, and Jesus can change our heart, and Jesus does change our heart, But if there's something that we are aware of that we need to go and fix in a relationship, and this is specifically talking about relationships within the church, so brother and sisters of Christ with one another, that we need to make sure that we um, seek out that reconciliation because 
we, we shouldn't be going to God and saying, Lord, here's my life. I want you to use it for your will, for your glory, for your honor. But we're not willing to change that, that, that black mark on our record right now. We need to go. God wants us to present him our best life. And that's not, again, about saying that Jesus isn't going to continue to work on making our hearts better. But when we see something that we know we need to take action on, we need to do it. Before we go and present our offerings to God, if we have something that we need to bring reconciliation to, then we need to go do that. So I want, want you to take this away, and I want you to take five on your own. Get your journals out. You know, if you don't have one, get one. We got these cool journals here. And spend some time with God saying, Lord, is there anyone that I need to seek reconciliation with in my life so that I can continue to grow and, and move forward in the plans you have for me. It's important that we have healthy relationships within the body of Christ and with others as well. So Lord, help us to, to grow in our relationships, to learn from our mistakes. And, and when we see those things that we've misspoken or mistreated and, and mishandled in our relationships with others within the church family, Lord, help us to go to them and, and seek reconciliation, to, to bring you into that picture, God, and to let you mend what was broken, what was harmed, and what was hurt, so that we can come together and to continue to give you our best, Lord. I give you praise for that and thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for spending this Take 5 with us. God bless.